Welcome. My name is Dr. Harney. I coordinate research training for the University of Leicester's Management Center part-time programs. I'm happy to be here today to talk to you a little bit about research training. Many of you are studying at centers where you'll see me in person over the next couple of years in your study. For those who don't, I'll be available to you through the internet, especially through our new Blackboard program. We regard research training as a very important part of your education. This is because we regard it as a very important part of the job that we do here. So what is research training, and why do we think it's so important? Well, there are two answers to that. One is a very practical answer. That's probably the answer you prefer. And one is a very philosophical answer. That's probably the answer you might be a little uncomfortable with at first. But pretty soon, I think you'll see that for us, these two can't be separated. And indeed, for us, philosophy is a very practical, everyday matter. And it comes out in research training. So what's the practical answer? What is research training from a practical point of view? Well, from a practical point of view, what we're talking about is something that will be useful to you throughout your life, a lifelong skill that will allow you to be flexible in the work that you do, will allow you to be very portable in the skills that you bring, and will allow you to develop those skills on your own after we teach them to you. You know from a practical point of view how important research can be in everything that you do as a consumer, as someone who's searching for appropriate friends and mates, and as someone who chose a particular university program. That's the practical side of research training. It's something that we do already and something for which we already have everyday skills that are very useful. However, those skills are based on things that are often much deeper. Let's call those the philosophical side of the answer. From a philosophical point of view, there are some pretty extraordinary terms that we have to bring in in order to talk about these questions. The first is epistemology. An easy way to understand epistemology is simply as the question of, how do we know what we know? Who says you know what you know? Why should I believe you know what you know? Another important term that goes along with that in research training from a philosophical point of view is ontology. Who are you anyway? Who are you to be telling me this? How can I believe you? What do you bring to this answer? This philosophical question of ontology, of who we are, also comes into what research training is. Finally, there's the question of ethics and politics in research training. This is the question of what you do with the knowledge that you develop. It's a question of what you do with what you find out about who you are and what you're becoming. And it's a question, a reflexive question, about what this knowledge and what your personality and identity does to you and does to others. These are real choices to be made. These are real decisions to be had. And this is the ethics and politics of research training. So it would be appropriate for you to ask me at this point, well, how can something be both so practical and so philosophical? Well, I think the answer lies precisely in the way that we at the University of Leicester Management Center understand philosophy. We understand it as bringing the very big questions of epistemology and ontology and politics and ethics to everyday life. And for us, everyday life takes place in business and management. Bringing those big decisions, bringing the questions about who you are, bringing the questions of what to do with your knowledge directly into business and management that's what, we, that's what we expect from you in research training, and that's what we'll work with you to try to teach you how to do. In short, what we're doing is trying to get you to think of research training as part of your everyday skills, skills that you already have, skills that you already use to understand yourself, and to bring those skills into business and management. Now, one way to do this would be to begin by saying to ourselves, okay, how do we understand ourselves every day? I'll start with us at the University of Leicester's Management Center. How would you understand our everyday life? Well, there's two things that you'd want to understand about us right off. The first thing is that you want to understand us as people who understand our everyday skills as critical skills. What do we mean by that, critical skills? You've probably heard that before, and certainly you'll hear it many times again at the University of Leicester's Management Center. By critical skills, what I mean can maybe best be explained by an illustration. Imagine that you had in front of yourself the Financial Times. This is a leading business newspaper in the world. Now take the Financial Times and open it up. What do you find out about it? Well, you find out about it that it has two sections, a 16-page front section and then a 12-page inside section. 
Now, the inside, se pe inside uh, section is the business section. 12 pages of important information, company news, stock information, etc. However, it's wrapped in 16 other pages of world news, of world culture, of international relations, of opinion, of politics, of ethic and moral questions, of religious questions. Ask yourself, why is it wrapped inside that way? The answer is that business leaders require this information information about social, political, cultural, moral, religious issues of the day in order to make sense of that inside section. If the business leaders of the world need that, we need it too. We need it at the University of Leicester's Management Center, and we suggest that you need it too. Being critical is about paying attention to both sections of the newspaper. That's one way to understand us every day. Every day when we encounter a business and management problem, we have a look at it from a critical point of view. We also have a look at it from a global point of view. We're concerned not just with how you would make a decision locally, but how that decision would affect you internationally. So for us, it's very important as well to think about the different cultural contexts, the different ways in which certain decisions, certain philosophical point of views would come to bear on a research question. In addition to understanding who we are every day, it's useful in research training to understand who you are every day. Who are you every day? Well, the first thing to say about you is that you're original. And originality is a key to doing good research. The second thing to say about you is that you already have a lot of research skills. Every day you make decisions about what to buy, who to go out for a drink with, who to uh, accept as a lecturer, etc., etc. You have everyday research skills, and those are precisely the skills we want you to bring to business and management research. Now, every day we're often too busy to recognize our skills. And one of the things that I would urge you to do now that you're in this program is to try a little experiment. I'd like to call this the out-of-body experience. Out-of-body experience, you know from science fiction, is often the idea of somebody leaving his or her own body and being able to look down on his or, own, his or her own actions. Try that practically in the workplace, in your home, with friends. Step back from yourself. Observe your behaviors. See the way in which you're always involved in research, always involved in investigating, and then making decisions, making choices based on the underlying philosophical questions of who you are, what you know, how you know, how you justify what you know, and what you do with that knowledge. When you step back and have this out-of-body experience, you'll see that you already have all kinds of everyday research skills and that you are already involved in the practical and the philosophical level of research. Once you start to do this, you're well on your way to being research trained. Finally, something else about you that is extremely important. You're not only original, but you're different. Each of us values difference here at the University of Leptin Management Center. We have our own differences and we value other differences. Bring your differences into your research. Don't think that research is about eliminating who you are. Rather, understand research as bringing in your origi originality, bringing in your difference, bringing in your research skills, your everyday research skills. We value that, and we want you to value that. You're going to be at the university a lot now, the University of Leicester. The University of Leicester is a very special university because at the Management Center, we're so engaged with critical and global research. But universities in general are also very special places, and they're different places from the kind of places that you may have been up to now, different kinds of workplaces, different kinds of organizations. Universities operate a little bit differently. And I want to tell you a little bit about those differences so that you can operate well inside the University of Leicester, and you can be a good researcher in that university. First thing about universities is that universities love problems. It's very different from workplaces. As you know, often in a workplace, you're asked to solve problems. Somebody brings you into the office and says, listen, I need this solved. Universities are odd places. Instead of trying to solve problems, they try to come up with new ones. You're going to have to reorient yourself a little bit to understand problems to be productive, to be good, rather than to think them as things that need to be solved all the time. Certainly, problems should be solved. But at the university, we're in what you might call kind of perpetual rehearsals. 
working on problems, developing new problems, like an orchestra that plays over and over a certain uh, part of a, of a symphony to try to get it right. We work at problems in the university, and therefore we love problems. Now that you're in the university, you need to start to regard problems as productive. An important part of being a researcher is learning to love problems. Researchers also work together, and this is very crucial, I think, for understanding a university. A university, or a college, comes from the notion of being collegial, of being together, of working together towards common projects and common goals. Of course, in business and management, we all know there's lots of competition and there's lots of efforts to get ahead. The university has some of those things as well, but very importantly, it values togetherness, working together, being collegial, and coming up with common solutions, coming up with new kinds of problems that we can work on together. Very important to understand these aspects of the university in order to do well as a researcher now at the University of Leicester's Management Center program. Finally, the university is a place that prides itself on being free from fear. You can speak your mind. You can have your own opinions. Of course, we want to see your opinions backed up with good research, but no one will ever be penalized for expressing his or her own opinion. And at the University of Leicester Management Center, we very much stress the value of feeling free from any kind of fear for what you say, and we encourage those who are bold enough to speak their minds. Finally, I want to say a few words, practical words for you. There's many more things to be said about these last practical questions of skills, and I will be saying to them to you in person in many cases when I come to see you at the centers, and you'll also find many more uh, uh, resources for this on the Blackboard, which you'll have access to three areas I'd like to stress right now. The first is reading journals. It's important to understand that for business and management, most of our work is published in and refers to journals. We don't use books very much. We tend to work with journals. Now that you're a University of Leicester Management Center student, you'll have access to the journals in our library here at the University of Leicester a whole series of journals that are extremely important for understanding our fields in accounting, in management, in marketing, in finance, etc. I urge you to access that resource of the library and to begin to understand the world of journals, which is the basis for the world of our research as academics. Secondly, reading newspapers. As I stress to you in the example in cr of, of uh, what it means to be critical, Reading quality business newspapers and newspapers in general is an extremely helpful way to bring context, to bring a critical view to the particular business problem that you're dealing with. I'd like to stress to you that reading outside of the program, especially reading quality newspapers, will improve your ability as a researcher in innumerable ways. Finally, making notes. There's an awful lot of information out there, and I just gave you more work by suggesting you should go to these journals and read these newspapers. It's worth giving you a tip now in exchange for all the work I just gave you. My tip to you is this. Try to read without taking notes. I know that sounds funny, but I'm not finished. Try to read something without taking notes. Then put it down, face down, in front of you. Then make your notes. See what you remember. It's a way to keep from getting bogged down, to get swallowed up by the number of words that are out there. Put it down, face down, and write what you remember. Write the summary. Keep a journal of what you read, both inside and outside your regular module work. This will be invaluable to you when you return it. It's to return to it, especially when you return to the dissertation. Ah, the dissertation. That's another topic. You're just starting out. It's not a topic you have to be worried about now, but if you follow what we've been talking about here, in terms of how to become a good researcher, by the time you get to the dissertation, and we'll be there to help you, you'll be more than ready to tackle it. So thank you for listening to me. I hope to meet many of you in the coming couple of years, and good luck with your research.